Okay, let's get started. Um, all right, so the purpose of this evening is to give um, give everybody a, an idea of what kind of settings you need to shoot this Comet. So as um, pretty much everybody on the island knows now, um, we have a, a pretty bright Comet in the sky. It's about magnitude one. Um, I got to see it last night for the first time and I was shocked at how bright it was. Um, it's an extremely bright comet. It's the brightest one I've seen since uh, Hale-Bopp back in the 90s. Uh, the tail is, is long, um, it's well defined and it's very easy to find the night sky. Um, once you're looking anywhere north, uh, you're going to pick it up very, very easy. Um, if for point of reference, it's not far from Capella, just hugging um, the north-northeast uh, horizon in the sky. So the sun really doesn't dip um, very far below the um, horizon this time of the year. And the comet is, is following that. Now it's just, it's gone past the sun and it's gonna approach, um, the closest approach I think is the 23rd uh, of this month. So um, it, this is only gonna get brighter and uh, more defined over the next little while, hopefully. Hopefully, because uh, we've had a lot of near misses with comets. Over the past, you know, 20 years since hale Bop, we've never really had them. Now, I've seen this one described as the Comet of the Century. I'm not entirely sure about that. Um, you know, I think the, the media are hyping it up a little bit, but it is a beautiful target and it is something that uh, is well worth photographing. So for this evening, I'm going to go through three methods of doing this. First of all, I'm going to go through um, standard um, camera. So this is, a, this is a mirrorless camera, but the same settings will work for a DSLR. Uh, then I'll go through using your telescope and your tracking mount, and then uh, a little bit more advanced going for the longer, uh, the longer lens, uh, getting the kind of photographs that I got last night. So just on the basics of this, um, you want a tripod. Uh, you have to shoot with a tripod at night. Uh, doing this handheld is uh, not uh, an easy thing to do. It's not, um, it, it's not a clever thing to do either. You really need to have it uh, good and steady. So a good heavy tripod like one of these, or uh, this is the Manfrotto one, uh, this is the Manfrotto 190. It's an extremely um, rugged um, tripod. I've had this for about 15 years now and it rarely lets me down. So you want a good tripod and a good ball head um, no matter what you're doing. So this camera here, like I said, is just a, it's a crop sensor camera. It's a Fuji X-E3 and this is a standard 35mm lens. So on a crop camera, this is a 50mm. So shooting um, the comet with this is extremely easy. Um, what you want to do is get it into the ISO that's comfortably native for the camera. Uh, and what I mean by that is what the best, um, highest ISO for a camera is that's not going to completely drown you with uh, camera noise. So for this camera, most modern cameras, that's usually 800 to 1600 ISO. If you have a Canon or a Nikon that you've bought in the last five to seven years, it's as good as it's going to get. Uh, camera sensor technology really came along in the last 10 years. So all of these cameras, there's not a huge amount of difference between them in terms of their sensor performance. They'll all work really, really well. So you set your camera up, you put it into, um, start off with 800 ISO, get it down on top of the uh, tripod and point it um, north, north, um, northeast and try and center the um, comet in the middle of it. So once you have it centered, it's, it's about focus. Now focus isn't too difficult this um, type, time of uh, night because the moon is out at the moment it's, and it's almost, um, I think we're only a couple, we're only a week off full moon. So um, it, with the skies clear tonight, it's going to uh, be very easy to, um, to, to use your autofocus system at night. So stick it onto single point and find a, something in the distance, a light, a tree, a town, whatever it is in, in, in the distance and focus on that. And once that's done, turn off the autofocus on the camera. So you have it focused and leave it on that. Now on a, on a Nikon camera and a Canon camera, there's a switch on the side of the lens that'll turn off the autofocus. On the um, Fuji cameras, it's on the front here. I don't know what it's like on a Sony camera because I've never shot one, but uh, I assume it's pretty similar. It's either on the camera or it's on the, the lens body itself. So once you have that done, you're focused and you have your ISO together, it's about how much light you can get into the camera. Now this particular lens is an f1.4, so you want to open it to its widest uh, aperture. So this is at 1.4. And once that's sitting down then on the camera, the uh, you've got to decide how long you want to leave the shutter open for. Now the rule of uh, 400, the rule of 500, whatever you want to, to, to call it, comes in uh, at this stage. So. There are calculators online to do this, but there's a much, much easier way. So if you put your camera into aperture priority 
and set the ISO to 800 and open the camera up as wide as possible, it will set the uh, shutter speed for you. And for a 35 millimeter lens, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent, this is a standard. Most, most cameras come with a lens of this um, type of focal length. It will look at somewhere between uh, six and 10 seconds. You need something from six to 10 seconds to get this in. So if your um, shutter speed is much higher than that, drop the ISO. And if it's much shorter than that, bring it up again. And that will bring it into, a, uh, into the sequence that you need. Uh, a remote shutter is a good way of doing this. So the little remote shutter that plugs into the side of it will work. But on this camera, I don't use a remote shutter. There's a three second timer. I know my experience of using Canon cameras, um, we, uh, I've had that in the past. Stick it onto the three second timer, uh, press the shutter button, stand back from the tripod and let it shoot. And that should get you the, the image that you're looking for. Now, if you're shooting raw, you're going to have much more, um, much more options when it comes to, um, to uh, uh, adjusting these after you have it shot. And um, I might possibly do something and, and post it up on, on KTech's site the next couple of days about how to process an image like this. It's not that difficult. Um, it's just about white balance really and maybe stretching the image slightly. But um, like I said, get it onto the tripod, get the ISO to where it's comfortable in the camera, usually 800 to 1600. Um, open the lens up as much as possible and then allow the shutter speed to, to correct itself. And that should get you a fairly decent image. Um, you know, looking at what I shot last night, I'll just bring a couple of them up on the camera if I put a battery into it would help. Most of the shots that I took last night were straight off the camera. I didn't have to do a huge amount of them in post-production. And that's really what you're after. You want to try and do everything in camera so that you don't have to spend hours trying to take um, limited data out of a, an image. So, as you can see, this came straight off the back of the camera last night. And you can see what my settings are. Now, they're slightly different because I'm using a longer lens, and we'll, we'll go into that now in a couple of minutes' time. So the very basic, you know, you don't need specialized equipment. It's a standard DSLR or mirrorless camera. Get it onto a decent tripod and the settings that uh, I shared and that should get you somewhere on it. Now you can get more advanced and I suppose that's where um, the hobby starts to take a, um, an alarming, um, an alarming um, run uh, in, in the expensive direction. But, you know, for fairly modest money, you can get pretty decent results. So what I have here is a uh, Skywalk, a Sky, um, a, a Star Tracker, uh, Skywatcher Star Adventurer, and this is an eighty-two millimeter uh, Evil Star uh, telescope. Uh, it's got a focal length that is pretty good for taking uh, images like this. You get a nice framed picture of the um, of the comet. Now what you need to connect that is you need a T ring, and this is the T ring for a. Uh, Fujifilm um, mirrorless camera. You know, on a DSLR they're much thinner than this, but on the mirrorless camera it's a uh, much longer flange to uh, adjust for the the space between the sensor and the front of the uh, lens. And this is a two inch nose piece. And you click these two together. You connect your camera onto it, and that goes into the back of the telescope here. Now, once you have one of those lined up and pointed at the um, at the celestial pole, and there's lots of stuff on YouTube about how to align these, it's not that difficult. You look up through here, you get Polaris into the right position, and you literally turn it on, and it star tracks for you. And then you make your adjustments at the top here, move it into the position that you need it in, and point it at the, um, at the uh, comet. And this is what I'm going to be doing this evening, so I'm going to try and take some much longer exposures. So exposures on this unguided, and what I mean unguided is you don't get into the complications of putting a guide camera on top of this, you should be able to get somewhere between a minute, minute and a half of uh, exposure before you get any star trailing in it. And that will give you a pretty good, that'll give you a pretty good image of it. Um, the other option is to use if you have a longer lens. So this is a 50 to 150 uh, lens on a mirrorless camera and 70 to 200 um, millimeter in a full frame, so uh, Canon, Nikon users would have a 7200 millimeter. This is an f2.8, and um, most of them are f4, and um, you can get f2.8 the more expensive, but this will do the same job. So you can put this on the tracking mount as well, or you can put it onto the, st onto the um, static tripod. Now you've got your exposures are gonna be much shorter. So you're looking at, you know, somewhere between five and six seconds before you get any star trading of it. The image that I took last night and um, that I was showing a minute ago, uh, that was taken with this lens. And I think that is about four and a half seconds. 
of and you can see that the stars are starting to trail a little bit but that's kind of okay when you're taking a picture of a of a comet because the comet isn't moving at the same speed as the rest of the celestial uh, bodies uh, see there's a question there about what time is this going to happen well you know the comet's actually in the sky now it's just hidden by the sun as in the brightness of the sun and um, the comet will be half 11 12 o'clock tonight it'll be um seeable it'll be low down on the uh, northern horizon and then as the night moves uh, uh, moves through and the sun starts to come up tomorrow morning <coughs> excuse me it'll come higher and higher and higher in the sky so ideal time somewhere around two o'clock tomorrow morning to about half three those images um from last night i took those at 2 30 this morning and um, if you can get into a dark site even better if you can find somewhere to um frame the image even better some of the pictures from Halebot that um back in the 90s that i really uh, enjoyed looking at were the ones that were framed uh, with trees or lakes or you know uh, coastal pictures uh, if you can frame the comet in the sky uh, as part of the total composition it makes a huge amount more sense uh, the other way of looking at it is the good old-fashioned uh, binoculars so um it's a, an amazing sight of binoculars i was looking at the tail last night uh, there is talk that there's a second tail um, on this comet, but it hasn't been observed yet that I know of. I'm open to correction on that. But uh, if it does and when it does, uh, binoculars is the way to go to uh, to see that. So we've got plenty of options that, you know, shouldn't break the bank. A lot of people should have, a, uh, you know, especially people who are interested in this kind of hobby, will have a, a, a camera, um, a pretty standard um, DSLR mirrorless camera. The bigger lens will get you a little bit closer and to get the real good quality shots, um, a pretty nice setup like this one here will work. In in terms of money, I mean, I think this whole setup was about 700 euros for the scope, the tracker and a, and a decent tripod with it. And then whatever camera you have will connect quite easily to it. These uh, connectors are pretty cheap. I think they're 30, 40, uh, 50 quid, depending on what your uh, camera type is and you know they're pretty easy to use it's pretty much all plug and play there's no complications of software or having to guide or anything like that this is a very bright object it's you know it's it's magnitude plus one at the moment it's up there with venus in terms of of how bright it is and um, the tail is quite big it's about the width of the full moon so it's very easy to see very easy to image and um, a particularly beautiful uh, image in the night sky at the moment so really that's um as much as i can give you in terms of advice of how to how to shoot it what i will say is it's it's tonight is probably the best chance we're going to get at least for a week i think the irish weather is going to play havoc with us for another 10 15 days after this weekend where it'll just be cloudy and rain looking at the uh, forecast for tonight it's to clear around midnight tonight and then we're to have one two percent cloud I'm hoping that one, two, one or two percent isn't sitting on the northern horizon as tends to happen when I'm trying to observe something. So um, I'll take any questions anybody has. If you just want to type them through, I can see them at the bottom of the screen and uh, we'll work from there. OK, would prime focus on a 10 inch F 4.8 refractor work well? OK, so that's going to get you very close um, and that's a lot of light gathering. Um, you'll be able to get a lot closer you're not going to get that big expansive picture of the um of the comet in the sky you're going to get a much uh, closer view so the, uh, a scope like that and um, i don't know what the focal length is in a 10 by 4 that's a fairly heavy you're about 900 um in terms of focal length so that's going to be a very uh, close in view that's a, a, a that is a a telescope built for looking at um, smaller objects like um, galaxies and nebula it'll still work but it'll be um, you won't get the full tail you won't get everything in the one uh, field of view unfortunately with that but it's well worth having a look at it uh, in terms of magnitude it's plus one at the moment that's what they're saying um, I would guess it's a little bit more than that um, when I went out and looked at it last night I was actually shocked at how bright it was um, I'd heard stories I've seen pictures online and um it is extremely bright and um, when i walked out my front door i live in a housing estate in the midlands when i walked out my front door last night my front door faces north and i could see the the uh, comet between the two houses in front of me and i thought that can't be it and i actually rang stephen to see if um he was seeing it as well and we had a bit of a giddy girl conversation on the phone for about 15 minutes because we had never seen a well we haven't seen a comet this bright 
in 20 odd years. Um, I think it's, it, it's not quite hell but but it's up there. It's very close. It's a beautiful, beautiful comet. We don't get them like this very often. Um, and if we've, wait, if we've waited 25 years to see one like this, it may be uh, a long time before we see one again. Or the way comets are, we could get another one next week. You just never tell. I mean, this one wasn't even on the radar until a couple of months ago. Um, I think it got the message kind of got lost in all the COVID, um, the COVID nonsense that's going on in the world at the moment. But it's beautiful to see. Um, oh, that telescope was 1200 millimeters. Yeah, you'd be very, very close in. You're going to be looking at the core. You're going to be looking at the, the head of the uh, telescope or the head of the comet. That's something I'd like to see myself. Uh, imaging that could be interesting. What I would say is go online and have a look at how to track the comet because your telescope mark is set up to track the stars. But I know there are ways that you can uh, change the guide camera to track the comet instead of the guide stars and that way you should be able to get a much longer exposure of the comet itself like i said it's not moving in the same uh, it's not moving at the same speed or the same apparent um speed as uh, other celestial objects because it's moving away it's coming from the sun past the earth whereas uh, the rest of the universe is kind of turning around us or so they were turning around it so any more questions for me i don't see any more coming in No? Okay, well with that I'll wish everybody luck. Um, we're going to record this and stick it up on the uh, Facebook page and I'll put up uh, a quick cheat sheet on how to um, how to uh, set put your settings on the camera. Um, I will be out. Sorry, one more question. Is Comet Lemon visible at the moment? It is, but it's nothing like this. Um, this is the one you want to look at. Uh, Comet Lemon is very dim. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's worth going to have a look at, but you know, this one really is stealing the show at the moment and we're going to get one night at this for the next uh, week and this comet could do anything. So, uh, as much as lemon is a nice one to look at, this is really the one to go after. Okay. So, um, yeah, any questions, uh, put them on, on social media. Uh, there'll be a gang of us out all night looking at this, um, Will a kit lens get it? Yeah, absolutely, Stephen. So this is a kit lens. So um, most kit lenses are 18 to 35. Um, this is a 35 millimeter, which is the, the, the far end of that. So if you um, just throw that one on, it should work, no problem. This is one of the, a Comet is one of those uh, events that the most basic uh, camera equipment will work. And the more, the better your equipment is, the better the image you get, but you will get instant gratification from cheap equipment. I mean, this camera here is I think 600 euros and the lens was three. So in, in terms of camera equipment, very, very cheap. Okay, with that, um, I'll call it a night and I wish everybody luck, uh, happy hunting. Um, please go and see this comet, it is, it's an amazing sight. Um, no, another one, what is the best time to look tonight at the comet? Okay, so um, anytime after half 11 is good, but the skies are gonna clear around midnight most of the country. And then I would watch it for a couple of hours. Uh, it'll be at its best, half one, half two, and that's when the sky's at its darkest because we don't get fully dark this time of the year because we are uh, in the middle of our summer. Okay, uh, so I'd like to thank uh, Stephen and Vicky for giving me the opportunity. Um, I'm more than happy to come on. It was great. And um, if you're looking for equipment of this type, give them a shout. They're always um, there to help at the end of the phone or email or Facebook or whatever your, your chosen member of me, uh, method of communication is. If anybody has any questions, camera specific, uh, I know my way around a Canon quite well, Nikon, not too bad, and I really know my way around Fuji system. So if anybody has any questions, uh, throw them on my social media and uh, I'll be happy to take them. So saying that, thank you very much for your time and I wish you all well. <laughs>